Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the Ultimate Base 4.0. In the beginning of today's episode, we're gonna launch our cooling system. Even if we don't have access to plastic just yet, we're gonna get access to plastic though in today's episode. Everything is already prepared here on the third planetoid. Currently, I'm still shipping over the fossils to the first planetoid, but very soon we're gonna switch that and send over the oil to the second planetoid. In the meantime, I'm already preparing a liquid pipe that goes to my water system in order to fill up the cooling room. But of course, we first have to build all of this. Maybe speed this up a little bit. I disallowed my dreamers from actually exiting the base, which is why sometimes they're starving because there's not always some food here in this refrigerator. And that is a little bit of an issue. Yeah, we'll probably have to go ahead and sweep this up with high priority until we have the cooking station a little bit closer to the destination. Also, I think Ari is soon going to have a stress reaction, but it's not actually a very bad reaction. He's just an ugly crier. I did send over some aluminum ore in order to fix the Atmo suits. And by now, I think, yeah, we only have oxygen going in. There's still a lot of polluted oxygen around here, so we should be taking care of that. Maybe add another deodorizer. And then once Ari can actually equip an Atmo suit, he's not going to struggle that much anymore. You know what? I never really accounted for the freaking dreamers. Since I didn't let them out of the base, now one dreamer unfortunately passed away. <laughs> Yeah, I've kind of ignored the warnings, but of course, all of our food should drop right away inside of the kitchen, which will happen once we have moved the kitchen. That is kind of unfortunate, but okay, one less mouth to feed, and right now we're not really utilizing the dreamers as intended. I still have to be aware of the next dreamer. This one here might actually starve as well. 843 kilocalories left. Joshua is also currently cooking and actually making some progress, already gathering up some more stuff. Oh no, we are now getting into the hydrogen layer here. So the course of action is going to be to cool down the base and then to move the farms into a regulated environment. Checking with the third planetoid, it looks like there are... Ooh, this is low priority. Wait. Yeah, checking the fossils, we still have 22 tons right now. Let's check on the main planetoids. Wait, 83 kilograms. What about lime we got also 80 kilograms oh this is bad so yeah i'm gonna allow lira to build this storage extension and then also ship over some more fossils and look at that the wheeze wards actually work like a charm together with the water layer it's just thing at around 30 degrees or so if we had two rapport generators this might not be the case now unfortunately it does not look like i can move the dreamer i actually have to use a memorial yeah i'm just gonna keep the dreamer here let me know if we can move the memorial after actually building it for the first time and getting a duplicate in there otherwise i want to first decide for a proper location dreamer 4 saved herself from starvation very well done. But yeah, I think we're recovering with the compensation that was going on here. We have a body temperature issue at the bottom and then a atmosphere issue at the top. So now without any further ado, I'm gonna focus on that system here. This needs to be built immediately and then I can fill up the bottom part with water and we can already get the aqua tuner running because it's gonna take a while in order to heat up the water. Okay, I decided to sacrifice a bunch of the Pacos here. They all laid another egg so I can probably just get rid of it. And thinking about it, I might want to switch from my current farming system to an almost complete Paco fillet diet. Though it's gonna take a couple of cycles to catch on. I'm still dependent on my current farms right here and that they start to work again. Maybe I'm just gonna add a bunch of temp shift plates here to make this better. That's three ice temp shift plates. I can get that out of here. Grab me one pack, grab me two packs and three packs. Thank you. And so hopefully I'll get over this starvation crisis. And then maybe I'm just going to build a bunch of emergency farms here. And then I'm going to decide where the fish tank is going to be. And of course for the hotel we want the best of the best food. And this might even involve the Pacus. But if not we at least get the worker base already fed. Now we're almost done here with this room. Let me just go ahead and set up a temporary liquid vent here. In order to be able to dump the water and fill up the room. Wait a second. Snoring friend. <laughs> Wait, who is snoring? I don't understand. Did I accept a snoring duplicant? Okay, we saved one more dreamer, but looks like... Yeah, we need more food. Is Joshua on his way? Where are you? What are you doing? Sleeping? What? Wait, Joshua. Hmm. 
So he might have been... Do I need to change the schedule? I need to observe this. Maybe now it's a huge issue that the beds are so far away. Okay, now for the first time we got the cooked seafood. Let me actually check out the spice grinder. It slows the decomposition of perishable food. Rocketeer spice. What? It provides a boost to piloting abilities. Oh, this is so amazing. Strengthens even the weakest of muscles or improves operating skills when ingested. But there is none that will actually just overall give us more kilo calories. Ah, look at that. We're actually saved. We just need to cook this fast enough and then hopefully we're not gonna have to mourn any more losses. Joshua made it to bed easily. The problem is ever since an update, they don't consistently stay sleeping. I think it might have something to do with the percentage. This time Joshua decided to sleep to 100%, but that means he did not do everything else in his downtime. Look at that. Gene is also sleeping here. Oh man. We gotta switch around the schedules again. The problem about having the bedtime in the beginning was that if they don't get to bed in time, they will not recover all of their stamina. But then if I use the downtime slots for them in order to get back to the base, then I'm wasting all of their time. Still, it would probably be better. Let me change this around. So that would be five downtime slots and then some bedtime. Now the problem is if they actually get to do everything they want and there's still some downtime left, they might actually go ahead and do a job and then they still don't make it to bed in time. One way we could solve this problem is by activating the water cooler. So they just remain here until it's bedtime. I think I want to test this out because right now I just observed too many duplicates sleeping anywhere. Like me right here is also sleeping. Come on. Yeah, let's switch it around. So this schedule here, and I'm actually going to give them the five downtime slots. So at least they are going to be more efficient during the work time instead of sleeping. But that means activating the water cooler. They're going to decide to spend the rest of the downtime there before sleeping. And I'm going to change that for all of these schedules. The dreamers are still going to remain with the same schedule, just four downtime slots. And then I think for the duplicates on other planetoids, I can remain with the previous schedule. So they would be making their way back, maybe taking a poo before sleeping and then doing the rest and then the downtime here is not going to be wasted. Also that means I can finally open up the printing pot and the duplicates will not actually go there during the downtime because we have a water cooler which is much cooler. Okay, I think we're ready here for the first step. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure we have this hooked up to power. Now, since this is going to be the very edge of the base, I'm probably going to have space on the right side and the heat transfer doesn't matter. And then I think I'm just going to do the same thing here for the steam turbine. Though I think this could become an issue when it comes to placing down the liquid reservoir. I'm actually not sure. Let me test this out. Liquid reservoir? Where are you? Right here. No, actually, we can place it, so it's going to be no issue. And inside the chambers, of course, we're going to go with heavy watt conductive wires. One more thing we need to add is some automation wire from the sensor to the aqua tuner. There we have it. Let's go ahead and activate the water pipes. Oh my gosh, you really did not build this. Yeah, looks like we still got a lot of meal lies to cook and Joshua is already on it. So we have currently nothing in the fridge. I'm just going to prioritize this for a moment and then put it back to priority nine so two people are actually taking the job just in case another dreamer attempts to die looks like we got some more fossils coming in from the third planetoid very good this is actually a whole ton there there it comes in fresh water i can't believe it it is going to accumulate right here all we have to do now is finish the loop the incoming water at the moment is 33 degrees, so it's not going to help us tremendously in cooling down unless we actually use the thermal aqua tuner. Okay, at this point, I filled up the room enough. I almost got one entire row worth of liquids. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this off right now, and then we can get rid of this part. In the meantime, my dupes are finishing the rest of the pipes right here for the cooling loop to get started. In order to start filling up the cooling loop, I'm going to use a little trick here with a liquid bridge, and we're just going to bridge over into the cooling loop making sure the output overlaps with the path of the water. So as soon as the water did one entire cycle all the way around, it's going to be blocked right here and no new water is going to be added unless we then add the liquid reservoir. But let's first make sure we cool down this toasty environment. At this point, I think I also want to go ahead and switch the launcher to shoot to the first planetoid. We can still send along some diamonds and fossils if we wanted. Ari would just use the teleporter to supply it to the first planetoid then. But I much rather focus 
focus on something else and that is going to be the oil so maybe we're going to get started with an oil well here which i think does not come with an overheat temperature however it is going to require water and 240 watts of power so let's say we set this up right here and then we get a floor going i would then need access to this renewable water source here to cool steam vent uh, let me see. Yeah, I can do that because I'm using Atmo suits here. In that case, I'm just going to dig my way over here. Oh, darn it. Lyra, you need to learn super hard digging. And then we're going to make our way down here in order to set up a pump. Liquid pump goes here. Actually, wait, that's going to overheat eventually. Yeah, I need to build it out of gold amalgam. But then I start to pump this up. And that only means I'm going to be using more and more power, which means my darn cable here isn't going to suffice anymore. Yeah, I'm going to build the oil well already but first we're just gonna make use of the oil we currently have which should be enough for the one or other steam turbine that's all i'm after right now in order to take everything to the next level steam turbines are just gonna be an absolute game changer and honestly in none of my playthroughs it was that hard to get the darn plastic i mean we could just wait for this dracolet egg to incubate which happens very soon and then we start to change it into a glossy dracolet and afterwards we actually get plastic so that's going to be the long-term goal. But right now, all I want to see is a pump, maybe right here. Then going to go ahead and bring this all the way up to my current pipe here. And maybe at some point, we want to make sure to get rid of the water and kind of trap it. Maybe here in this little cavity. This would actually make it possible to still power with our current system. And then maybe right here with the liquid pipe element sensor, we can go ahead and detect the oil. If it's not oil, we want to dump it right here. That means we also want to set up a not gate and some automation wire right there. I had another drop of Pacos here in the printing pot. That's going to make it tremendously easy to get the Paku farm started. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. We could have started it with just one. But it's good to know we have some in case the farm start to fail. Or fail again, I should say. But it really looks like we now got plenty of food, 6.4 kilograms of pickled meal and some fried mushroom. Even more at 8 kilograms. That means I'm gonna get rid of just a few mushrooms here. And maybe also a few meal lice. Yeah, let's just get rid of maybe half of those. I overreacted. Good, looks like we have started filling up the cooling loop. Now I need to make it clear in which direction it needs to go. Like, why do you even attempt that? That doesn't make sense, right? Oh, it does make sense. But the only reason that makes sense is because I initially didn't think it would be going this way, but down. That means I have to switch all of these bridges. Uh, no, wait, you have to go into the other direction. Let me cut this off. I'm going to close this off briefly and then maybe gain access from the other side. That is going to allow me to place down the liquid reservoir. Okay, now this is going to make much more sense now. Let's switch that into a liquid reservoir right there. This is then already going to allow me to kind of fill this a little bit up, equalize the temperatures and then then we're gonna take our little tour through the base. In the meantime, on the second planetoid, we can finally start to repair the Atmo suits. I should actually check how many reed fibers I have. Looks like I got 10 units. That is gonna be no issue. And then we can fix the Atmo suit. That also means I need to make sure my duplicate isn't capable of going down, except with the Atmo suits. Also take away access from this side. And there it is. So water should be flowing now. And it's just going to go straight through the liquid reservoir. I'm going to allow that for the time being until we have one entire loop going. And you can also already see the aqua tuner is doing something. Maybe right now I don't really want it to do anything. Well, maybe. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we can probably leave it running right now. But I definitely want to change the temperature setting of the sensor here to, let's say, above 20 degrees. So 20 degrees would be the temperature I'd like to see inside the base and as soon as we go below that the aqua tuner is gonna shut off now this thing is gonna take a lot of power so be prepared and i'm just gonna wait until we get one entire loop we can also already see the water here is now at a nice 20 degrees and also the metal tiles are starting to cool down yeah as a matter of fact we can see the gradient here very nicely as the water is progressing now it looks like we're stuck here i probably did not reconnect this just yet there we go and now we just have to do the final loop right there in order to turn with what we already have. 
Ah, uh, look at that. My dupes are gonna be so happy about this. Well, except for Dreamer 5. Here we are. And as you can see, the new water is being stopped from incoming. However, at 39 degrees... Yeah, it actually heated up to 30 degrees again. So that's fine. But what I want to do is... Let me see. Cut some pipes here. Yeah, I want to cut the output of the liquid reservoir, which means all the liquid is gonna accumulate inside the reservoir. And this way we have a little bit of it as a reserve and to actually be more accurate when it comes to the exact temperatures. Without the liquid reservoir, the temperature would be all over the place. Some of the packets would be 14 degrees, others would be 25 degrees, some would be 20. But with the liquid reservoir, we can make sure it's always staying at that temperature. And whenever the packets are coming in at, let's say, 25 degrees, they're going to be below the desired temperature. But because they are entering into the liquid reservoir, they actually only cool down what's inside the liquid reservoir, which will be significantly less than 14 degrees. So yeah, this is actually going to be extremely practical, I would say. Wait, Ari is starving. What are you talk- Ari, you have no food. Whoops. We have plenty of food. I'm going to send over some pickled meal. I totally forgot about that. At some point, I'm going to automate the food delivery for all the planetoids. For now, I just want to send over some pickled meal. Just everyone. Yeah, looks like that's going to be the entirety of the delivery. 6.5 kilograms. So now, Ari, you should have a little bit of food left over, at least for another 11 cycles. I'm not worried about that. What I meant to say is once all of the water is inside, we already know this is the exact amount that our loop actually requires. Because this is already half of the liquid reservoir, I'm now going to completely fill it up. And that means half of it is going to be always inside of the loop and the other half of it is going to reside in the reservoir. And it's very practical since the water is 34 degrees, it's going to be cooled down to exactly 20 degrees, which is just absolutely magnificent. By the way, the water here is only at 50 degrees right now, so we barely heated up. Well, actually, we heated up significantly, but still, kind of in a good way. I'm now deconstructing this bridge, so we add no new water to the system right there. Thank you, whoever you are, Ren. And that now means we can connect the system again and the loop should just go forever okay and now before something goes wrong we're gonna deconstruct this pick anything up we should be able to pick it up from three tiles and above so that means i'm gonna have to actually we might be able to pick this up yeah so no debris is actually gonna remain in this room but as of this point our base is gonna become cooler and cooler which means we can start to add stuff like the kitchen and other crafting materials that would otherwise tend to heat up the base too much and of course with added steam turbines we can now really get into the industry let me check the third planetoid again we built almost everything yeah let's go ahead set up this sensor here to detect what uh crude oil right there so crude oil is going through and then it's gonna go up and it's going directly into the launcher so we probably yeah already want to change the destination to the second planetoid that's where we are gonna treat the oil and then maybe also build this pump Okay, good stuff. And then we can also maybe mop up a little bit of oil or just bring this over, let it dribble down. In the meantime, on the second planetoid, I... <laughs> I just cannot find the Atmo suits. Where were they? What am I doing? Am I sending them over? No. I swear, I had two Atmo suits on this planetoid and they are just gone. Well, maybe we can build some with iron. I'm just gonna need two of them. That means 600 kilograms of iron, which I should be able to produce here. Colony achievement. What is it this time? Reach cycle 365 with a single colony. So that was actually just one year. It felt like seven. But just lately, it's now much less stressful that we taken care of the food. Also, while I'm at it, I'm just going to check out the new blueprints. We got something to do with rockets. Come on, show me. Oh no, it's actually a new wallpaper. That's amazing. Next up, we got some gloves and I totally skipped over them, but let's just keep going here. Basic crimson pants. Okay. The Dreklet, by the way, has hatched. I need to think about how to convert them to glossy Dreklets again. I think it was with meal lice, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, maybe you can let me know in the comment section. So I said I was gonna produce plastic in today's episode, but I was gonna cool down the base in the beginning of the episode. It doesn't feel like this is the beginning of the episode anymore, and I should probably move the plastic acquisition to the next one. And I know I'm a big fat liar. Go ahead, unsubscribe. Just, just miss the entire 
journey ahead of us or join in the next time when we take care of the plastic. It is imminent. We are already pumping stuff up. Yeah, look at that. It is inevitable. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye bye.